Hey everyone, this is Bowie. And who doesn't love dogs? Bo, here. I'm giving him treats to stay up here. <laughs> Many times dogs can get in the way of your adventures. Oftentimes it's a struggle to find folks to watch your dogs while you go bikepacking, or they just kind of melt down when you leave the house. <laughs> but there's one simple step in resolving this issue, and that is bringing your dog with you on your bikepacking trip. All right, you want it down, bud? We can do that. So in this video, we are going to talk about dog packing and what it's all about. So how does one go dog packing? Well, first, you need a dog. And second, you need a way to carry that dog. There's basically two ways of carrying your dog. You can have a trailer or you can have a cargo or a basket style system on your bike. Obviously the dog is a big part of dog packing and the heavier the dog, well, the more work you are going to do and probably the more work it is for that dog because not all the time are you going to actually have your dog in a trailer or a basket but oftentimes you're going to have that dog running next to you. So you're gonna want a dog that likes to actually run or walk or stroll, or I guess just slowly watch you walk your bike up a hill. <laughs> so training your dog to be comfortable inside a trailer or a basket is important and this typically takes time. So start slow and get your dog acquainted with riding in a trailer or basket before actually going out on your first overnighter. One thing that's very important to mention is dog packing will add significant weight. Not only are you carrying a dog from time to time, but you're carrying all of the gear for that dog, first aid gear, food, comfort for the dog, but also the stuff for you. So that adds up in weight and that definitely adds up in trying to figure out where you pack things on your bike and what bike you're actually going to bring. It is a much more challenging task versus say bike packing normally. And because of this, you're probably gonna find yourself going at a slower pace. Uh, it's gonna be a heavier bike. You're going to need to take care of that dog. So thinking about all of that stuff beforehand is obviously important. So just recently we tried to teach our 10 year old dog Bowie a new trick and we put him in a trailer and he just did not want anything to do with it. So while our experience didn't work, I wanted to learn more about dog packing and how to kind of train your dog into it and the experience as a whole. So I decided why not talk to John Freeman who has been successfully dog packing for seven years and has done so in five different countries. John shares a ton of details on dog packing so I hope you enjoy this interview as much as I did. So if you like what you see in our videos, make sure to hit that subscribe button and notification bell. And if you wanna help support us a little bit more, you can do so by signing up for the Bikepacking Collective, which is bikepacking.com's annual membership. There's a link below with all of the details, but in short, it helps support the video you are watching, all the things that you see on our website, bikepacking.com, and it also helps support the Bikepacking Journal, our biannual print publication. All right, John and Mira, thanks so much for uh, for joining us today. And I've always been fascinated with dog packing, uh, bike packing with dogs. I think that's something that's really unique. Um, I have a dog myself, and well, even though Bowie doesn't like to ride with me, I've always wished he could. Um, so I guess first off, where are you guys? Where are you guys from? We're Canadian. We live. Uh... In Canmore, Alberta. So we're just on the edge of the National Park and the Great Divide mountain bike route. Um, yeah, just in the front range of, of the Rockies. So, you know, great tourist town, lots of ice climbing, rock climbing, mountaineering, um, bike trails. Yeah, fly fishing, almost everything. Yeah, I've been yeah. there a few times and it's that that whole zone is stunning for sure. Yeah, it's, it's nice. You know, our tree line is is low enough that we have these beautiful craggy peaks. They're, they're picturesque and um, yeah, nice friendly town. International airport's just an hour and a half away. So it's, uh, it's ideally suited, that's for sure. So I guess, when did you start getting into bike packing yourself? And when did you realize you wanted to start bike packing with uh, dogs? <laughs> yeah, um, well, it's interesting. I, I rode a, a mountain bike when they first became commercially available, like years and years ago i was a young kid and what we're doing now called bike packing i i didn't know what to call it but i thought that's what they were meant for and then later on i figured out oh you're supposed to race these things or or you know 
ride them only downhill or some such thing. But I always thought they were, were for this. And I had done a bunch of cycle racing uh, track and, and road mainly and then some mountain bike. And as I left the sport competitively, I got into a, a bit more cycle travel and I'd done a, a trip or two. But in more recent times, I had a dog. I wanted to go bike packing, but I didn't want to leave the dog behind. Mm. So it was really just a matter of, and that was maybe six or seven, maybe even seven or eight years ago now. Um, it was really just a matter of trying to figure it out of, uh, you know, here's the bike, here's the bags. This is where I want to go. How can I bring the dog along? Obviously they can't run, you know, beside us the whole time. And so I just figured out a way. And initially it was with a, a trailer, a single wheeled Bob trailer. And it's just evolved since then. Almost, it was almost never a time where I thought I wouldn't bring the dog. It's, it's been right from the beginning. All right. So let's jump into that. So, Obviously, I was taking a peek at your Instagram account, and yep. I saw like a throwback uh, post of yours with Mira t learning how to, I guess, ride in a basket. So take us through the process a little bit um, as far as how you trained Mira to ride with you. Mira's not my first dog doing this with, so I've done it before. Um, so an already an, an adult dog. This is the first time I've done it with a puppy. Really, I sort of broke it down into steps where I could be comfortable. I wouldn't injure, you know, my dog, and um, and the dog has a chance to adapt and be comfortable. Some dogs are naturally more adventurous than others. Some are super timid, mm -hmm. um, which was my previous previous dog. Uh, you know, he wouldn't even walk across a shiny floor as an example. So with Mira, I put her in a basket on the ground and got her comfortable getting in and out of the basket, made sure it was padded, made sure it was comfortable and, and, and homey for her. And then as you see in the videos, I've put her, uh, the basket on the bike. She's uh, then in the basket and I just wheeled it around with me beside her, giving her praise and, and treats. And then a little bit later, I was able to ride trails in a, in a local park. So again, low speeds, no traffic, under a, lots of control. And so it was just fun, fun, you know, game kind of thing. And then, um, and then I packed her up, put her in a crate and uh, flew 12 hours to Spain <laughs> and spent uh, four or five months uh, riding around. Yeah. So, it was, and that's interesting because like with a puppy, it's tough. They can't run great distances. They can't even jump in and out of the basket. You got to pick them up and lower them down. Uh, sometimes walk with them, and they're getting heavier and heavier every day. Yep. Um, <laughs> so that's that's a challenge, but it's fun. I mean, they're they're learning, and you're learning, and and uh, yeah. So that's that's basically how it works out. How how old was Mira when on her first bike packing trip? Uh, three months, just over three months. So young. Yeah. So that's yeah, super young. That's the the time limit or the earliest you can fly internationally with them okay. uh, because of vaccination. So you've done bike uh, dog packing, I guess, with a basket, also with a trailer. What's what's your preferred method and the dog's preferred method? I think for both, it's it's the like I have a currently I have a salsa black burrow and it's, it's an ex, sort of a extended fat bike, although I don't typically run the fat bike wheels unless I need them with the basket whether it's on the front or on the rear, the dog's closer to the rider. So you can reach and you can pet them. You know, they love you. They want to be close to you. The trailers are great because you can take them off the bike and you can just go trail riding for the day. Mm. Um, and then they're low center of gravity, the weight's spread out. So there's some advantages there, but when the dog's not in it, they bounce all over the place. You know, an unloaded single wheel trailer on single track is quite a sight to see. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I'd have to say that the baskets, the baskets are my preferred, preferred way. Okay. Yeah, for sure. And then I guess that begs the question: How often is Mira walking or running aside next to you versus actually inside the 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 basket? Yeah, it's totally terrain dependent. So steep ups, she's out. She's about forty pounds. So if I can get that off the bike, then that's much easier. Um, and she's typically walking or trotting these, you know, these steep, long climbs. Mm -hmm. 
And then uh, single track, uh, she's typically out. She can run on that loamy ground. Um, and I've given her a command, so she'll be behind me. Mm. And that way um, I can control any interactions with people or animals. And she's also not in the view. And I'll put her up front sometimes, maybe for the video, <laughs> you know, or or because that's just the way it worked out. And I know it's a, it's a pretty remote trail. Um, yeah, so she probably runs my guess is, is somewhere around uh 12 to 15 miles so 20 or 30 kilometers in a day but it's not all at once and it's not very hard mm -hmm. uh or high high pace so so i guess it's about you know it's about a third of the overall distance maybe as much as that 25 to 30 percent probably is, okay. is my guess yeah i don't have a call like a tracking collar on her so it's just a, these are guesstimates that seems like a lot but yeah, if it's split up, I'm sure it's not as as hard on on her. Yeah, I mean, you think of a through hiker, it's probably the similar distance that they might be doing over a whole day, and that's the same thing. We like that would be from you know early in the morning to later in the afternoon, and uh, we've had breaks. You know, she's chased sticks, and I keep an eye on her energy and her paws. If if her you know if I see an injury in her paws, they they're generally really good. Um, or if it's hot terrain, if we have to ride some hot asphalt, you know, say, you know, we've ridden through Mojave and up towards uh, Mammoth Lakes, you know, that's a, a hot part of the country. Um, she's more in the basket mm -hmm. okay. or high speeds, you know, where it could tear a paw, uh, then she's in the basket. Uh, or if, if I think there's more climbing to do in the afternoon, she'll spend the morning or vice versa. So I use the leash to control how much, how, what a pace is and, and, uh, so, so yes, it's up to me to, to because she would just run full tilt until yeah. she had nothing left, pretty much. So I got to kind of think ahead of it. Sure. How do you know when the the ground is too warm? I know here out west, you know, the sun's pretty hot. Uh, typically, the ground is can often be warmer than the air temperature. Do you just yeah. gauge that uh, based on your feel? And yeah, I mean, it's it's yeah. These aren't. I mean, it's not a scientific thing so much as you know. I'm observing her behavior. If she, if she can't stand on the asphalt, uh, you know, for any length of time, you know, or even if she f is is hopping her paws uncomfortably, and it's a hot day. Then I would you know make the call that you know she's going to be in the in the basket, even if it meant you know. I'm pretty comfortable up to about 8%. After that, it's it's a fair amount. Of, it's definitely some work, mm -hmm. um, you know, to, to climb with, with that extra 40 pounds. And then, um, yeah, and all told, it's, it's probably closer to 60, you know, with the food and, and a, you know, a few items for her and then her water and those kind of things, it, it, it adds up. Um, yeah, so, I'll, you know, I'll just sort of judge on the day and, and her reaction, you know, it, and err on the side of caution. If I sure. think it's too hot, then she's, I'm not going to force her to do it. Same thing if it's like a heavily cactus area. Mm. Uh, I have little booties uh, that mushers use, just yep. the, the Cordura ones. And they do a good job of, of uh, providing enough protection just to uh, keep the little stickers. Sure. You know, yeah. from pods, that kind of thing. So talking about camp a little bit, what uh, what does home look like on the road? What kind of tent are you? It looks like uh, on Instagram, Mira has a little sleeping pad herself. But uh, what does what does uh, home look like on the road? Yeah, so the the home sort of two parts. One is the basket. It's well padded out so that um, you know she's comfortable with any of the bouncing, you know, the, the edges of the of the plastic uh, basket. And she'll actually fall asleep if I left her out in front of a shop, hmm. for example, like going to the grocery store. Unless people are taking selfies with her, which does happen, she's comfortable there. And so there's a pad in there, like you mentioned. I take that out. That helps protect the the tent floor from you know from her if she's. You know, it's pretty fragile material. Those lightweight tents. Mine's kind of like a unicorn hair. It's one of these uh, uh, Cuban fiber um, Dyneema Uber lightweight tents. And but you know they, it's typically it's it's like a den I think for the for the dogs. Yeah. You know, and they're comfortable in that environment. So, you know, she finds, I give her enough space that I'm not pushing her and she's not leaning too hard against the tent. The only thing I have a challenge with really is um, uh, once I unzip the tent, the style that I have, it's not freestanding. And the pole is directly in front of this rainbow door. Mm. And there's these carp, I mean, even if it was aluminum, but there are these carbon fiber poles. And if she bolts out, out the the door in the morning um 
I think I've lost two or three poles. They just get snapped. And so I've had to go get, you know, dowel and some, yep. some pets tubing from a hardware store, and, you know, some electrical tape to, to, to make it work. But, you know, we, we work, we yep. work it. Yeah. So what, uh, as far as your bike, so you've got a salsa, black burrow, where do you fit all the, the, you know, mirrors belongings versus your stuff? You probably picked the black burrow cause it is, you know, a longer bike. So you're trying to look for extra storage, but when you're shopping for bikes or shopping for a bike, like how, how important is, you know, finding a bike that can fit everything? Well, I mean, it's, a, it's the same probably for everyone. Um, you know, we, you know, we have mounts for, for our extra water bottles. And if we have, you know, if we're on say the Colorado trail and we want to drop our post, we have a special seat bag for it or, or now you know, it's common people are using these lightweight rear racks and, and uh, that don't mount onto the seat post, that, that sort of thing. So it's, it's very much the same decision process. The, the challenge is I have dog food and maybe um, maybe 25% more water in some areas, although it's this time of year around where I live now, there's lots of running streams. So I can, you know, she can get the water from there if it's raining out of a, even out of a puddle or a lake, that kind of thing. So yeah, the Black Burrow was a was a choice because of the the extra length, and you can you know these custom bags that were ideally set like low to the ground, central, so I could load in the dog food, and and um, yeah, so it's important yeah to be able to carry all that stuff. I don't want to carry it on my body with a with a pack. So yeah, typical setup uh, for the most part: frame frame bag, handlebar bag you know, that sort of cockpit, but then from the seat post back, it's a little bit different. Custom bags for uh, the dog food. And uh, because we have the basket, uh, small micro panniers to cover uh, the rest of the gear, clothing and, and, and food. So um, yeah, not, not, it's sort of this hybrid type setup. And then the Black Bros no longer made. Yeah. Um, even though many people have contacted us and said, hey, what are you riding? Cause you can't really see the branding on yep. the bike, and um, and so yeah, with the way COVID is and, and the bike industry, they sort of condensed, um, you know, model the lines, and so uh, and we're now switching over to uh, a custom titanium by Carver. Oh, and, sweet! Uh, yeah, pinion drive, nice. milk drive, because uh, you know last year we did twenty five thousand kilometers. That's a lot of 12 speed chains, yeah, cog no sets, you know, multiple bottom brackets, all this kind of stuff. So that was the, that was the main reason to try and see if we could find something that would be um, more durable that uh, you wouldn't have to keep, you know, cause just the, the consumables uh, are enough that, uh, you know, it becomes a very expensive bike. If you would venture to guess how heavy would, is the bike with, Mira's stuff like maybe like a one of those international trips that you do with all all her food and a decent amount of water i don't even have to guess because uh last year or sorry 2019 i guess it would have been still we rode through missoula and the adventure cycling association is there and i had you know i didn't know a lot about what they did but i thought i'll go by for a visit and they were very accommodating and, and uh friendly you know like bring us a photo and they weigh the bike. They have this series they've been doing for more than you know, a couple of decades. I think it's, it's been. And um, so that was with winter riding kit, uh, food and fuel, but no water yet and dog food. And I, I think the number is 88 pounds wow. was what, and that's without the dog in, in it. it. Yeah. And yeah. And that's and, another um, 40 or so. That's right. Yeah. So, uh, you know, once all the, once the winter clothing is off there, you know, maybe we're, we're losing 15 pounds, maybe. Yeah. It's a challenging thing. Cause sometimes people will look at the bike and they'll be like, Oh, you know, what's, you know, you don't have to get all this lightweight gear. What does it matter? You know, a few more pounds, but, and, and now, um, we're starting to film more of what we're doing. So mm -hmm. cameras and batteries and that, sort of thing it becomes a challenge because i'm at my i feel like i'm at my physical limit and at the bike's limit sure or close to it to try and do the terrain that we want to do um 
you know, like new routes that are being developed, like orogenesis or, you know, through the Baja or the Trans Pyrenees we've, we've done before, you know, these big elevation type routes uh, in the mountains. Yeah, it, it, it's challenging to, you know, to do, you know, 100 plus kilometers a day and, and several thousand meters of, of elevation gain. Yeah. Yeah, I really have to choose what I take and don't take now. I, I don't have a lot of extra horsepower left. <laughs> sure, yeah. Well, you've got to be in good shape. That's that's impressive. You know, right now, I'm probably not. But by the time I ride for a couple of weeks, yep. yeah, it, it happens fast. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. 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 You got to be careful of the joints, You're, like Achilles, knees, that kind of thing. Like you can overdo it. Mm -hmm. It's um, it, that's the other thing with the bike, with the dog packing. You have to adjust, you know, your expectations, right? Like, I'm not going to get the the fastest known time yeah. for anything. Talking about international travel, how do you transport Mira? And are there is there like an international checklist for doggies? Or are there any limitations? Uh, definitely, you know, flying with Mira and, and entering a, a, a different country. Yeah, there, I mean, there's, um, I think international travel in general, and probably more so now is, is heavily controlled. And so, yeah, importation of, of pets is, but there's, fortunately, there's lots of great websites out there. Um, in fact, the article that uh, I've updated for bikepacking.com has a couple of links for Americans and Canadians and also for Europeans mm. um, in there. And so, yeah, there's a, a list of requirements you need. So it'll be vaccinations, um, health checkups. So basically start with your your vet and then some documentation. So to, con to control the vaccinations, there'll be a microchip already inserted into your pet, typically in the, in the back of the neck. Uh, just subcutaneous, and then the vaccinations are tracked with that number. So if if, uh, if there was an, you know some reason they could scan it and be and verify that the vaccination is in fact you know with this animal, not some other animal. But honestly, my experience, um, you know, land crossing into the U.S. or into Mexico, no one's asked to see the documentation hmm. in the air travel. Uh, in Mexico, they, they wanted to see it, but in Spain, I flew into the country, a fellow stuck his head through the rubber curtain and just like with the rest of the bags, he yelled, Pero! and stuck the crate on there and out she came oh <laughs> in my. her dog crate. And so it's a standard, uh, you know, dog crate that meets the requirements for travel. Sure. And, um, you want to make sure you, you cross your T's, dot your I's, all the medication is is uh, is administered in time to be active. And then if you're going to an island nation, there's typically a quarantine procedure. Mm. Um, sometimes it's very short, like with the UK, from what I understand now, I think is a medication you give within a certain time period, like within some hours, like 72 hours before your flight. Mm. Um, and then the, if you meet all the requirements, it wouldn't, be in quarantine, but I believe Australia, New Zealand might be down as much as down to 10 days okay. now. So, and if you weren't uh, compliant, then it could be longer and a cost to you and, and these kind of things. So you need to do your research before you, before you, um, before you book your flight and maybe it's, it's not for everyone. It's, it's a, it's a, it feels like it's a circus when you're going through uh, <laughs> an older international airport, right? You have the bike box the dog crate and if you bring a trailer oh. or the box on top of that and i've done you know either a single cart which tends to work the best if people want to help i'll take the help yeah you know going through but i've tried it with two carts and and that's uh, almost impossible you know so yeah that's crazy yeah. i can imagine you just like hauling things like all over the airport like just trying to like pull with both hands and making sure you're, you know, not leaving a bag behind, man. Yeah, totally. And you, you know, like it's in a nation where it's not your, your, your first language, you're like, you know, or some kind of culture shock or even at home, you're like, is someone going to take my stuff or am mm -hmm. I going to be allowed or can I fit into the elevator? You know, we make it work. Yeah. Um, but that's why over the last couple of years I've preferred to ride 
to where I'm going to. Sure. And um, it's just it's just easier. So when I was in Peru, we were chased viciously by dogs. I'm sure I I'm sure you've been chased by dogs before in the past too. Has does Mira help with uh with fending off those ankle biters or? No, not really. I mean. That's the that's, that is a plus about having a basket. The dogs are higher, so uh-huh. they're somewhat safer. She's used to this now. She like even you know as a as a pup, and now she she's not reactive to barking dogs. She ignores them. Mm-hmm. Um, and some of the dogs, when they realize a dog is in the bike, they pause. Mm-hmm. So maybe there is some help there. They're like a little. Yeah. <laughs> they have almost the same reaction as people. <laughs> like, uh, uh, wait a minute, I haven't seen that before. Yeah, but typically, I, you know, like a lot of people, we all have these tricks, like, you know, water bottle, you know, sprayed at the right time or, mm-hmm. or uh, you know, feigning to throw a rock, mm-hmm. that, that sort of thing. Um, and we've been pretty lucky we haven't had any real incidents. I've been concerned at times. Um, but we, you know, we did have one incident in, in uh, Guanajuato, Mexico, is, you know, what looked like a healthy street dog, um, you know, and I know there's probably some controversy of people and breeds and dogs and some are quite protective, but mm-hmm. some dogs, you know, a little chihuahua can't do as much damage as a pit bull type mm-hmm. dog. Um, and that's what bit her and, th- and they tend to lock on mm. and she, she ended up with a few stitches, six stitches and a bit of tear in the ear. It was more traumatic to me. She yep. seems not to care, but now if I see that breed of dog, I'm I'm much more on edge than. Interesting. Is that was that your most frightening moment, uh, dog packing, or is there a different story? No, I think that's probably the most traumatic. I mean, um, you know, I th- I, there's been a couple of things, but you know, just in other international travel, I've you know, I've, without her, you know, I've been in places where there's been much more potential for for uh violence or you know mishaps and yeah we've been pretty lucky i think you know i had one we've crashed a couple of times in uh in snow and then i uh california i clipped a rock wall on a very narrow trail and by the time the bike flipped over the bike got angry at me and landed on me she she jumped clear and um i was in with a day's ride i was able to get stitches but ended up with 13 stitches to I had torn a couple spots in my arm. The chain ring had Ouch. done that. So um, I guess that's probably more of a risk if you're traveling alone more than with a dog, per se. Sure. And then with, with animals, um, like bears in particular, you know, if I'm in bear country, I'll keep her on a leash. She, she could chase them. Deer is not so much of an issue. She's more likely – and she'll respond. She'll come back to me. But, um, you know, a swat from a bear – that's the end of my dog possibly. And yeah. she might bring it back to me. Right. And I don't want to see the, the bear get put down either. Cause that's yeah. the end result typically. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, um, yeah, just about wildlife and, and livestock, you know, private lands and people, you know, they have their cattle, whether it's open graze permits or, or whatnot. If I were in those areas then I'll keep her on leash. As so well. the leash is connected like always to her, say, even if she's in, in the crate or just when, she's running beside you not always uh if we're you know if we're away from from people and and uh you know, if we're off private land like blm yeah. land i'll have her off leash or in single track she's off leash but i use it there's a har- i put a little harness on her um one that doesn't rub uh the fur off she rub you know she runs so much mm-hmm. and then i can i can help her jump into the basket and i can ease the impact of her landing with the leash and then I can control her pace because she would normally run ahead mm. at speed and stop. Yeah, probably, you know, about 70, 60 or 70 percent of the time she's on leash. Um, and then in the basket as well. And it's a runner's type thing with a little shock yep. forward section. As long as you're careful with it and the rear wheel, it's it's the best way to go. I don't I don't connect her to the basket. That way she could jump clear if we had a crash or um, and she's in and out so often throughout the day. I mean, it's it's got to be over 100 times on an average day. So, um, yeah, if I was clicking her in and out, you know, it's, it's hard enough to get somewhere. So planning for those injuries, how do you what do you pack for for her? And then say, you know, she when she got those stitches, did you find a vet internationally? Like what's some advice that you would give folks for that? 
so basically my first aid kit kind of doubles for, for both of us. The only extra things in there are some dog specific eye drops and some vet wrap, which mm -hmm. is useful for humans too. It's, mm -hmm. you know, sort of, it adheres back onto itself and the stuff for dogs typically has a bitter uh, taste oh, to oh, it. Yeah. Stop them from licking or biting injuries. And, and um, I've only had to use it on really one occasion. Should you know, scrape some, some fur and skin off her leg just to keep it clean. Mm -hmm. In my experience is, is that a lot of even small communities will have a, a pet vet or maybe even a large animal vet that could help you out. Um, and it's, so, so I often will no, I'll notice them. It's like, a, you know, you're about to buy or you've just bought a specific model of car. Now everyone is driving those cars. And so for me, we're going through a town, I'll notice a, a sign for a vet office and for a bike shop. Those are the two common things that I'll, you know, you'll see. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so just on my walks in central Mexico and Guanajuato, I knew exactly where a vet was. And, uh, so after we got the, the dog, eventually after it released, uh, its hold on her, uh, we were, you know, at that point we were safe. I was like, okay, well, it's more than just a, you know, a, a, a little thing here. Right. So, um, yeah, I was able to just walk into the vet and, and, uh, get service right away. And, uh, you know, it wasn't very expensive. That's the other plus about it. And, uh, yeah, they were very professional and very helpful. So it was, uh, yeah, it was a good, it was a good experience, not a good reason right. to go in there, but the service was, was great. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's been and the same thing with dog food. I mean, people have pets. Most of the world they have dogs as pets, and so they're, you know, dry kibble is is uh, is usually widely available. Um, it's just the size of the bag is is really the issue for me. Quick hitting questions here. What uh, what is your Mira and your favorite bike packing location? Oh, Spain. What's uh, what's both of your favorite trailside foods? Mira loves cheese, any kind of cheese. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. I like I like tacos. If I can find a, yeah. a street taco somewhere, yeah. What's your favorite activity outside of cycling? I guess maybe both of yours. Yeah, her. It's it's uh, compulsive stick, <laughs> stick gathering, stick chasing. <laughs> yeah. Up until recently, it's been climbing for me. Okay. Yeah. Well, she can't do that. So, what does she just watch you or? Well, I think now that I have her and we're bikepacking, I'm doing so little of it. Yeah. It's, it's a non, it's a non issue. Right. Yeah. Right. If you could give just a few pieces of advice for an aspiring dog packer, uh, what would it be? Yeah, just like with so many things, just approach it with a sense of fun and adventure, and um, do a little bit of research and plan. You know, read the article in in bikepacking.com. There's lots of good information there. I think. Um, yeah, but just have fun. It's, you know, the, the dogs are often your best buddies and, and, uh, if you play with them, you're, you're going to have a great time. And I guess one other thing is, is check your expectations. You know, if, if you ride a shorter amount, it's not a big Eagle thing. Like you've, you've had a, you've had a different trip mm -hmm. than if you're packing light and you're, you're looking to set your personal record on the great divide, um, or your, you know, your local, um, bike packing race, you know, just the, the, the journey really is the point of this. Yeah. Awesome. Well, can we, can we see Mira? Yeah, of course. Hey, sweetheart. Come here. Come on. Ah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, well, Mira. You comfortable there? Yeah. Who's that? <laughs> Say hi to Neil. <laughs> Love it. Hey, oh, there, there, there she is. Hi. Yeah. Cutie. Hey. What yeah. uh, what breed is she? Uh, Border Collie and uh, Red Healer Cross. Okay. So the red and the blue is basically the same same yep. dog, just different colorations. But uh, yeah, just off a, a working ranch um, just north of Calgary, and uh, yeah, so you know she loves to run and exercise, and and uh, yeah, perfect for for dog packing. Yeah. How old is she now? She's just about to turn four. Oh wow! Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. 
All right, John and Mira. Well, I really appreciate you jumping on. And for folks that are interested in learning more, uh, John just updated the dog packing. Uh, it's dog packing 2.0 uh, resource on bikepacking.com. So make sure to check that out. And what's uh, Mira's got a pretty famous Instagram account. What's uh, where can we find Mira on Instagram? Yeah, you can find her on Instagram at Mira La Para. And those are three words with uh, underscores in between them. We'll be showing uh, our adventures at uh, Omni Tierra. There's uh, two videos there, a little how to use uh, a trailer for people. And we'll add more how to videos. Uh, a friend of ours, uh, Ryan Van Boozer, oh, yeah. his, his channel has gone, has uh, done so well. It's like he's having spin off shows, apparently. So, yeah. So, yeah. Ryan's a so, great guy. And yeah, I saw a though? few of those videos of you guys in there. And yeah, awesome. Awesome to see. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a lot of fun. And, and, and uh, I think the main reason really is, is people are, see, you know, they enjoy watching, you know, a dog and, and, and it's uh, owner sort of experience the world. It's a lot of fun and interest and stuff. And so it's just nice to be able to share this, this, uh, these trips with people. Right. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. All right, you two. Well, thanks so much. And um, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll look at those ears. We'll, <laughs> we'll chat with you guys soon. Okay. 